This afternoon's session is a little bit different, I guess, from uh, what we were talking about earlier because this is really about you and not necessarily you in the job that you do. Um, it's about you as a person. So um, I hope that you're going to enjoy it. Now, um, before we start, um, please just take the opportunity to introduce yourself to the people on the table with you um, in terms of name and uh, your job title, maybe your company, but could you also add something that's more about you on a personal level as well, please? Right, we're going to, we're going to stop there, please. If you haven't had a chance uh, to share, then uh, maybe do that on the way out. Um, so what we're going to be talking about is, is you and often the importance of values and at a personal level is overlooked and in fact there's some research that suggests that those organizations that help their employees understand their personal values so not their organizational values but their personal values can achieve um, a an increase in discretionary effort of up to 17 percent so that's a phenomenal difference and you know, the other thing is, at the end of the day, we are more than the job that we do, right? So why, why would we not be interested in us? And why would we focus our attention just on living the values of our employer? So um, I'll just explain this. This is just a, a screenshot uh, for, from the tool that we'll look at a little bit later called My31 Practices, which is online. And this is my hub. So today, quite appropriately, my practice is I turn creative thinking into practical reality. And that's what this session is all focused on. Um, and you can see yesterday, um, my, I don't know if you can read it, but it's that I share humor freely, even when sometimes inappropriate. Um, but that's just my sense of humor. I'm sorry, I apologize in advance. Um, and this, the, you can see on the right hand side some of the other things that you can do there. The purpose of today is not really to look at the website offer, it's more to look at the My31 Practice approach, which you can use without using the website, right? So I just want to take you through that. So I'm just going to talk a little bit at a conceptual level. You're then going to do most of the, uh, spend most of the time working on creating a practice for yourself. And then I'll explain the theory and the science that underpins it with whatever time that we've got left. The reason that uh, it starts with go and then it ends with go is a little bit like um, what I was saying this morning uh, for those of you that were there. If we spend this time together and then you end up doing nothing differently, then what was the point? So uh, values at a conceptual level, why, why should we bother? Well, the reason is that uh, today, you are writing your life history. Um, what's the date today? The 20th, is it? 20th. Yeah, so we've got 42 deaths, sorry, 41 days left of 2018. That's all. We've already had 324 days of this year. You've written your life history for this year. You've nearly finished it. You've only got a little bit of time left. And... The point is that you're the only person that can write it, right, your life history, because you have the pen. And if you think about your life history as a document, what is the difference between your life history, chapter 2018, and any other document that you'd like to consider? What's the difference? Pardon? The emotions. The emotions, okay. Anything else? You are in control of it. Think about all the doc so think about whether it's a Word document or a PowerPoint or an Excel spreadsheet. What can you do to it when you finished it? You can change it. Thirty first of December, twenty eighteen. Your chapter is closed, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about that. It's done. It's written, and it will stay that way forever. So, the challenge and the question is: Are we? really making each chapter what we want it to be. Because if we're not able to go back and edit it, then why would you not make it your very best chapter that it can possibly be? 
and thanks for being brave and volunteering. <laughs> so what story are you going to write for your colleagues, your friends, and your family to remember you by? That's the question. Because one day we're all going to be there either burnt or underground. And what is it that you want to be remembered for? Because you're, like you said, you're in control, you are in control of it. This is the research that uh, I was referring to earlier. So from an employment point of view, so if you think about uh, yourself at work with your teams, if you have teams, then why would you not want to tap into this 17% discretionary effort by helping them to understand their personal values? So that's a kind of very quick introduction. And now what I'd like to do is get into uh, the nitty gritty of, of actually how this approach works. So uh, what I'd like you to do on your tables is have a very brief discussion of probably five minutes. Uh, so a couple of minutes on what does the word values mean to you? And secondly, why are they important? So if you could just get into that conversation, please. So some of the things that I've been hearing, uh, you've been touching on how values are those things that you hold very dearly that you are strongly attached to, that you just won't give up. Um, at the back, you said the emotion, that you mentioned the word emotion. They are emotionally laden, and they actually drive our decisions and our choices and the way that we behave. And the reason that they're important is because we live in a very, very busy world. And we're like a boat on an ocean being just tossed around, if you're not careful by everything that's going on around you, and all you're doing is reacting to that environment. And sometimes what happens if you're reacting in a way that is not aligned with your values is that you will not be happy, you will fe feel miserable, and in fact, in extreme cases, you might actually become ill. And the reverse is that when you're reacting in a way that is in line with your values, you just feel great, you know, it's like everything is so easy and everything works brilliantly. So the reason values are important is because if we don't understand them, then how are we going to be in a position to make those choices about taking control rather than just reacting to those things that go on around us? They give us the direction. Think of it as your moral compass, if you like. But without taking very practical decisions, you might not be behaving in line with them. And why would we want that? The issue or the challenge is that it's very easy just to do that reacting bit. Um, but the problem is that you find, you know, you'd be doing that for a year and you look back and you think, why is it I'm so miserable? And it's because you haven't been taking control and you haven't been living your life in line with what is truly important to you. So, um, on your tables, can you just grab one of those sheets that you've got there, please? If there's not enough to go around, then uh, use your notes in the back of your book. Uh, you can use that to the, for the same thing. And to start with, you're going to use the back. So you've got your sheets and you've turned them over, so you're using the back and you've got something to write with. That's what you need. Everybody set? Okay. The first stage is to choose a value that is important to you. Now, in some ways, it doesn't matter which one you choose. So don't beat yourself up about, oh, is that the one or is it not that one? Uh, because this is just going to be a practice. However, if you can identify a value that is one of your important values, then you will be doing the work that you might have done after, after this session. So it would be good if you could land on one that you resonate with. In order to help you find uh, a value that is one of yours, you might like to think of moments when you've either been really pissed off, uh, because that's probably when one of your personal values is being trampled on, or a time when you've just felt brilliant because that's probably a time when one of your values, your personal values is in play. 
And I just share a story with you. I was at a, um, I suppose it was a thing a bit like this, but it was a, a training and development day. And we had uh, two teams, and uh, what we had to do was send a representative of the team to a table, and there was a game thing on it, and we had to negotiate with the member from the other table uh, in order to get to the end of the game. And at the beginning we were told, uh, there's just one rule, uh, you must tell the truth. So I was the last negotiator. We were kind of neck and neck with the other team, but we had a really smart strategy. We thought we were gonna win. So I went, we did the negotiation, uh, completed the game, the result was announced and the other team won. And uh, I'm still quite competitive, so uh, I went up to the guy who I negotiated with at the end and I said, you know, we were really convinced that we had got that sussed and we were gonna win. How did you do that? And he said, oh, I lied to you. I still get like this now. I nearly punched the guy, you know, I was like <laughs> so angry. Dro it was in Birmingham, drove home far too fast, Jimi Hendrix, full volume on the stereo. My daughter at that time was about four, played her at Tiddlywinks 20 times, beat her every time <laughs> to get it out of my system. But, and that's how I discovered that fairness is something that's really, really important to me. So on your own, please consider just for 60 seconds, which value are you gonna work with today? Great. Now we're not gonna do all of these things, so write a short definition, do that later. Okay, the reason this is important is because you have, might have the same value as you written on your piece of paper, but it might mean something different to you than it does to you. So when you're getting more deeply into this, it's better if you have an understanding of what it means to you. So a very short definition, just a sentence. Now, I'd like you to think of a metaphor for the value that you've chosen. So uh, who wants to shout out an example? Who's gonna share their value with me? Integrity. Who said integrity? Okay, thank you. And as a metaphor for integrity, you might like to think of something like Mother Teresa, right? When, when you say integrity, for me, that, that's a metaphor that comes to mind. Or you might say a doctor. So a doctor has integrity, right? Who's got another example? Honesty. honesty. So who do you associate with the value honesty? What metaphor would you think of if you think about honesty? My Your mum. <laughs> Fantastic, okay. Or you might say uh, a brilliant judge. That, that's somebody who is all about honesty. So think of your metaphor and write it down next to your value, please. It can be a person. It could be a company, it can be a thing. So for instance, um, I was talking to somebody the other day about efficiency as a value, and they said, well, what about a Formula One pit stop? Absolutely brilliant example of efficiency. Have you all got a metaphor? Got metaphors? Have you got your metaphors? Not yet. What's yours that you're looking um, for? Work-life balance. Work-life balance. Work -life balance. So balance. So what about a gymnast? Anybody else not got their metaphor yet? Achievement. Pardon? Achievement. Achievement. What about an Olympic athlete? Okay. And... So maybe empathy or compassion. Yeah. So maybe um, Buddhist monk or something like that, a priest, but a, a very good priest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you've got your metaphor and what I'd like you to do is follow these steps. So think really hard about your metaphor now. So you're not thinking about your value, you're thinking about the metaphor and you're thinking about the behaviors that you associate with your chosen metaphor. So if it's um, a priest, what is it about a priest that demonstrates why they're such a good example of compassion? And you might say things like, well, actually they make eye contact with you. Uh, they listen to what you say. They ask you questions to clarify their understanding. They schedule time to be with you on a one-to-one. -one. So things like, just list as many behaviors as you possibly can about your metaphor. 
Now again, this session is kind of an appetizer, right? For the, so you'd spend longer doing this, but this is really just to get you through the process. So now, if you could just show the person next to you what you've come up with, and if you've got a couple of other suggestions to add to that, then do it, and the vice versa. But we'll just spend a minute doing that, uh, so please do that quickly. Okay, so now, so now from your list that you have, now from the list that you have of behaviors, think back to your personal value. Look at the behaviors on your list and choose your favorite one, please. So this is um, a behavior that you'd be really proud if you could display on a regular basis in honor of the value that you've chosen. Just either circle it, put an asterisk next to it, just choose your favorite. And now, you're going to write your my practice. So the format is, it, begin, it always begins with an I, and then you use the present tense. Use positive words, so uh, for example, you wouldn't say, I don't do this. It, it's always in a positive way. Use language that you would use personally. So for instance, if you're the sort of person, let's say we were talking about the value of, uh, let's say, relationships. And uh, one person might say, I invest time in um, my colleagues. Another person might say, I hang out with my friends, right? So it's not right or wrong, but it should be the language that you use. And Embrace emotion. You know, if you want to say, I enjoy something, um, or words to that effect, then feel free to do that. So the important things are I, the present tense, action word. So focused on uh, the behavior that you've chosen, have a go. Okay, if you've got that far, that's great. Now, I'd like you to talk with the same person as you talked to just now. Um, but the role of the person this time is to challenge you. And specifically, the question is, what does that look like? And would I know if you had done it? So let me give you another example. If I said, um, I'm going to be polite, uh, so I am polite, is that a good example of a practice or not? Who said no? <laughs> Why is it not a good example? Yeah, so politeness is not just the statement, right? Uh, if I said I listen to people carefully to show that I'm polite, then that's a much better example, right? Because you can know whether I'm listening to you or not. So um, when you're talking with your colleague, that's the challenge. Is it observable? And work together to improve your sentence if it needs it. Okay, so with your... With your new, improved version of your My Practice, what you can do now is uh, turn over the page and fill in as much as you've got so far. So where it says My Value, put in the value that uh, you chose. Where it says My Practice, put in the practice that you've um, decided on. So let's hear some uh, examples. Uh, let's hear one from each, well, one from a couple of, or two or three tables. So somebody here would like to share, please share with us what your, my value is and then what your, my practice is. Do you want to speak to the room? Yeah. In fact, I've got a microphone here. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, integrity. So my value is? My value is integrity. My practice is I encourage others to be true to themselves and their morals by showing this behaviour myself. Okay. And if you were leaving this room now, what could you do today that demonstrates that in a very concrete way? Influence or um, encourage people not to be influenced by other people. 
um, in order for them to stay true to their own morals. Okay. Um, it, it's probably more in a workplace setting, I'm, I'm thinking, in terms of when you see somebody change direction because of something that somebody else has said to them, yeah. and it's just staying true to the moral that you are following. Okay. So, a couple of points there. First, this is <laughs> for you, not you at work, right? So, think of this in terms of you at work and out of work. Uh, the second thing um, for you is um, think about how, and we had this conversation just over here, how are you going to do what you just described without being creepy about it? Because if you have a cup of coffee with somebody this afternoon and you say, you really need to be true to yourself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are people, they're going to walk away. <laughs> so, but uh, you've made a, a really good start. You've got your value. You've got the bones of a practice. What I would encourage you to do is think about how can you really ground it in something that is observable so that you know whether you've done it or not. Okay? Yep. So instantly I'm thinking of using supportive words. Okay. Exactly. And you know, this, this thing is not a perfect science, especially at the beginning. Uh, I remember when I did my very first set of my 31 practices, it took me probably four months of fine-tuning it, maybe crossing some out, introducing others. But the key thing is just to start with something and practice and see how you go. I can, well, I can, I can manage. <laughs> oh, you want to go? Okay. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> Hi there. Um, so, so it would be good to get your feedback on this, actually. So my value is, is to protect, so as, as like a natural protector. And the practice I wrote is, I help to protect people in my daily life through the interactions that I have. Okay. But I, I'm, I know there's some more I could put there, but I'm hoping you can help. So how could you demonstrate that in a practical way? So I guess it's the ability to challenge, okay. but also challenge selfishly, uh, selflessly, rather. <laughs> That'd be not very good. Um, and so therefore you put yourself on the line and you're, you're doing the right thing for the people uh, who work with you. Okay, so one way, are you saying that one way in which you help to protect people is by challenging them so that they can improve and therefore you're helping to protect them or is it something different? Uh, both, so you challenge the people around you to make them the best that they can be and, and protect themselves. Inversely, you protect them from situations that they may not be skilled or comfortable enough to, to deal with by themselves. Okay, so I think you might choose to explore this area of, uh, of um, challenge a bit more mm -hmm. and through you providing challenge, you are actually helping people um, be better and you're protecting them in that way. Next, who's next? Thank you. It's quite similar. Okay. So uh, my value is honesty, my practice. I have difficult conversations about the performance of the business to drive improvement or change. Well, you said- Can I just interrupt business, you? What I find fascinating is that everybody's focusing on the business. I was, I was gonna, I, I can translate that to in my, well, I play rugby and I do coaching as well. So I do that both ways with our other coaches and okay. with players themselves. So and it doesn't have to be in a specific situation, right? So your yeah. example, that's just the way you are. Whether it's with your team, whether it's with your rugby guys, whether it's with your family, that's the way you are, right? So it's really important that your values are something that flow through you in any which way you're performing. So, and one more from this table. Thank you. Um, my value is loyalty. And my practice is that I am committed to always seeing the best in people by encouraging them to talk about the things that they are good at. Okay. So there I would drop the first bit of the sentence and just say, my practice is I encourage people to talk about things they are good at. Yeah. And it's in honour of your value of loyalty. And there's obviously a connection there. Now, we had this conversation, but you see that, that one is very, very observable. You will know at the end of the day whether you've done any of that or not. You'll know whether you did it well or not. Other people will know whether you did it or not. So that's the beauty of it. And yeah. it's really important that you're able to reflect on, on that because if it's something a bit more vague than that and you say, well, did I do it or not? Well, does it matter? doesn't really matter. 
That's why the my practice needs to be something far more tangible. All right, so those have been some really good examples as a, a first effort. Um, what I would encourage you to do is one of two things. If you think you've got something that you're happy with, practice it for the rest of today. And then tonight, before you go to bed to sleep, um, think about how well have I done that? And think about the impact that it's had on you and on other people. If you feel that your practice needs a bit more work, then do that this evening or for the rest of today, and then practice tomorrow. And at the end of tomorrow, just review and reflect on how, how well you've done it and the impact on yourself and on others. So um, this is the way that you can now also reinforce this. So um, at the beginning of the day, and this, this, this might sound a bit sad, but at the beginning of the day, I look at my practice for the day, and I've actually chosen a picture, a quotation, and a video or a music clip that I associate with my practice to reinforce it in different ways. So as an example, if uh, earlier on in the slides you saw uh, this thing about I measure performance, right? Did you, do you remember that? So um, what you might do is have a picture of a ruler. What you might also have is a video clip of Getting Better Every Day, the song. And you might have a quote, um, what gets measured uh, gets managed or whatever it is. So you can see that that quote, that picture and that video clip are all connected to the practice that is about measuring performance. So just give some thought now to what you might choose, or you can use your phones. If you're on, if you're on Wi-Fi, uh, go on Google, search some of the keywords that you've got in your practice and image and see what comes up. Just play with a, for a few minutes with um, picture, quote, and video clip. On these, uh, what's really important is to choose the ones that you're drawn to. So if you're looking at a list of quotes, for instance, and they're all rubbish, don't choose one. Don't choose something just for the sake of it. Uh, wait until you find something that you're drawn to. And it might be that you can't find a, a video clip. You can find a picture and you can find a quote. That's absolutely fine. OK, so let's hear just three examples of, of those. So what I'd like to hear from you is what your practice is and either the picture quotation or video clip that you are drawn to. So who, let's start at this side of the room this time over there. Yeah? So what you're doing is sharing your practice and then what have you found in the way of either a picture, a quote or a video clip? Okay, so do you want to know my value as well, obviously? Yeah, yeah. go on. So, which is honesty. Uh, my practice, I will ask questions and actively listen before giving my opinion. Okay. Um, and then I've put honesty is the first chapter in the Book of Wisdom. Brilliant. Okay, you want to pass it on to the next table? So, I had empathy as one of my values. And then my practice was to listen, observe and acknowledge emotions and needs and interactions. And then when I was putting it in my phone then, I had a photo of like an ear and someone yeah. listening. And then the song from Dream Girls that Beyonce sings, Listen. And then there was a quote from Ernest Hemingway about listening as well. Fantastic. Pass it on. If you, if you don't want to share, that's fine. Just pass it on. Um, my value was trust. Um, and it's quite a personal one rather than more of a work-related one. Um, the practice was I build on a strong foundation by spending more interactive time with my daughters, such as after work and school. Okay, so just a, a suggestion. You might consider rewording that to be um, I spend time with people that are important to me. Yeah. And then you can do it with your family. You can also do it with your colleagues, friends. And what and have you found? I uh, found a quote online. Uh, time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. Once you've lost it, you can never get it back. Brilliant. Okay, pass it on. Actually, I was only intending to do two or three, but these are great, so keep going. So I chose integrity. 
My practice is to uh, ensure I treat everyone in accordance with my values without making differences and compromising my moral guidelines. The quote is, integrity is doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Brilliant. I love that quote. Um, <clears throat> so the value is work-life balance. Uh, my practice has become, I regularly assess how I feel physically, mentally and emotionally and make conscious choices about the type of activity I do. Fantastic. And the quote is, you will never trip... Oh, God, that was a bit close. Um, you will never feel truly satisfied by work until you are satisfied by a life. And there's like a nice holiday picture to go with it, so... And finally, guys? No? Yes? Anybody want to share? Um, so my... Value is uh, politeness. Uh, my practice is uh, I treat people kindly and always try to be helpful to them. And my experience is I didn't get a video, but for my picture I got uh, Galahad from the uh, Kingsman movie. Yeah. And his quote, Manus, uh, manners make of the man. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. And apart from it being kind of relaxed and fun... Believe me, in the morning, when you look at your quote, your picture, and your video clip, and just reinforce your practice, what you're doing is setting yourself up to realize the opportunities when they come about, and you're also setting yourself up to dive into those opportunities when they arise. So without that kind of preparation, you might walk by stuff, but with it there in your head, the, in, the chances of you actually doing it are increased a lot. So uh, I just want to tell you um, three short stories. Um, when I've been explaining this approach, uh, I use the example of value, the value of compassion. And I, was, I had a meeting with a guy in Victoria in London. And afterwards, I was late for the next meeting and I was running through virtually through the station. And this uh, old lady with, you know, the old-fashioned purses that are like this with the clip at the top. So she opened it, and her money popped, the coins popped out. And despite the fact that I was late, I just had to go and help her. So I helped her pick up the money. I gave her some of it back. Um, <laughs> she, she, she said, uh, I can't afford to lose it, love. I'm on a pension. And we had a bit of a chat. And I walked away, like, feeling so pleased about this example of putting compassion into practice and offering help to a stranger. And then, some weeks later, I was on the Tube in London, and it was just rammed. Everybody was like this. I was by the door, and uh, the, the train stopped, the doors open. A guy with a rucksack got off, and he didn't know it, but he took the earphones of another guy who was over by the other door. He wasn't wearing them. They were just, you know, sort of hanging, and he, they got taken away. Because it's so jam-packed, his eyes went like this as the guy got out, and I noticed it. Then the doors shut, the train didn't move, the doors opened again, and I don't know why, but I looked down, and on the platform, there were the earphones. So I just stood off the train, picked them up, passed them over to the guy over there whose eyes were like this. We didn't say a word, he was obviously thrilled, and the train set off. And then sometime afterwards, I was thinking, you know, I wonder if I didn't help that lady in the first place, and I didn't feel so good about it, about this helping a stranger, would I have looked down? Would I have noticed? If I had have noticed, would I have stepped off and picked it up and given it back to the guy? I don't know. And now, I'm a bit of a nightmare, because if I seen tourists looking at a map, hi, <laughs> can I help? <laughs> <laughs> but and uh, usually people are really grateful and it's a great experience. Sometimes they're like, Ooh, you weirdo, piss off. Um, but most of the time people are really pleased. So the reason I tell you those stories is please practice what you've just said you're going to do and see what happens. And then for the last few minutes... Um, what I'd like to do is just whiz through some of the theory and science that underpins this. Uh, so you can see that this is not just doing one small thing. There are lots of things that come together to help you make your practice a reality on a day-to-day -day basis. And the reason that's important is because 
just doing one thing on its own is not enough. There's just too much going on. Um, it is this thing about connecting your heart, mind, and body. So mindfulness, for instance, you know, got, uh, has been like this real fad that people seem to jump on the bandwagon for. And yes, it's great, but it's only one part of what you could do. And yes, there is some mind, you know, this is mindful practice. Um, your body, the body piece, is this piece about taking action. Because it's all well and good meditating, but unless you actually do something, what difference are you really making? So it's heart, mind, and body all together. And if you take control in this way, and if you make these choices to do these things that you've decided that you're going to do, you'll end up on this side with the power rather than on that side with the stress. And you know, whether you're just unhappy or whether it's a, a more severe case than that. Like I say, it's this spider's web and uh, there's some neuroscience there. Uh, the best way that this was described to me by a neuroscientist was uh, he said, it's a bit like when you're in a jungle with a machete and you hack away a path. What happens to the growth? What happens to the growth in the jungle when you've hacked away a path? It grows back. And then you hack away again and you hack again and again. And then what eventually happens? The growth stays away and it leaves the path in place. And so that is kind of the layman's explanation of the neuroscience that sits under this, which is that through repeated practice, it just becomes the way you are. And that's why now I don't have to go, oh, there's a tourist, do, should I go and ask them if they need some? I, I just go and do it because that's just the way that it is. And then the web application, if you want to have a look at it, do. If you don't, that's absolutely fine. So I, I use just a, um, an Excel spreadsheet printed off for ages before the, the website was put in place. But what I find useful about it is at the beginning of the morning, it does send an email saying, this is your practice. And then at the end of the day, it says, how did you do with your practice? And you get the chance to rate it and also to fill in your my experience, which you've got a gap uh, on your sheet to do. So, in summary, if you live a values-led life, that's how you will gain greater happiness and fulfillment. But it is hard work. So, you know, people say to me, are you serious? Do you do that every day? <coughs> and the answer is no. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to be the person that does this all the time, really, really brilliantly. But the fact of the matter is that it's the real world. And so sometimes it doesn't happen. Most of the time it does. And it's just one practice each day. The reason it's called my 31 practices is because there's no more than 31 days in a month. And yes, for the, the clever guys, for the days that don't have 31 days, you miss out number 31. So my, my practice for number 31 is I practice my favorite, my practice. So I just choose one of the other 30. And over time, it becomes natural. Then, as just some quotes that I, I quite uh, like, uh, which mention the word practice. That's my favorite. In theory, there is no difference between theory and practice. In practice, there is. And then I couldn't resist that one. And when you think, you know, my daughter said to me, oh, Dad, you can't quote yourself. <laughs> so, but even the Rolling Stones practice, right? And sometimes people say, well, you know, I do these things really well, so I don't need to practice them. But the fact is, those guys have been at the top of their field for 40, 50 years, and they would not dream of a performance without practice. So, that's what we've done. And that's if you want to know more. Thank you very much.